Hello, everyone. Welcome to Cloud Wars Live, where we explore today's digital revolution by speaking with business executives and thought leaders who are changing how the world lives, works, plays, learns, and dreams. Our guest today is Steve Dehib, Senior Vice President of Oracle's Cloud Business Group. And this is part of our 10 part series on the Cloud Wars Top 10 Executive Insights. So we'll have a chance to hear from Steve about what Oracle's cloud strategy is and what he and the company see going on in the market. Steve, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I appreciate it. Well, Steve, uh, I know you were one of the folks uh, early on at Oracle that started to bring you know, a strong business orientation and customer orientation to the cloud business group. So tell us, please start off a little bit. What are you seeing in the market today? And maybe how is that different from a year or two ago? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I mean, we have things like emerging technologies that are starting to permeate every aspect of work and life, you know, from self-driving cars to precision agriculture to, you know, personalized medicine to smart cities that are changing the way we interact with the world around us. And I think you talked about that in your setup, which I think is great. I think the real promise of these technologies, whether they're AI or machine learning or blockchain or human interfaces or IOT is to allow us to innovate in ways we couldn't before. And I think we're starting to see things sort of at this tipping point, you know, that point after which unstoppable change occurs. And what we're seeing is this tipping point where enterprises are starting to adopt emerging technologies faster than we've seen in the, um, you know, sort of in the, the, the commodity market, in the end user market, in the commercial market. And I think they're looking for these technologies uh, to, to really help them change how they drive business, uh, change how they innovate, um, change how they you know, can drive different experiences with their, their, uh, either their employees or their customers. And so they're, these things are moving out of the lab, they're moving out of the sandbox and customers are really looking to deploy mission critical applications using this technology. Steve, it's interesting how you put that, right? That it's, uh, you know, the, the, the tipping point and beyond which it's this, this unstoppable momentum going forward. And it's right, the, the, the time sequences here, the time periods are just so condensed. It wasn't that yeah. long ago, right? You probably got a lot of questions about, well, Steve, it all sounds good, but geez, how do we know your security's gonna be good enough, right, in the cloud? How quickly that's changed. It's amazing. I'd say, you know, I had the opportunity to meet with so many customers, whether it's here at Oracle, going out there, we had our collaborator event and, you know, there's like 5,000 end users and these are the people in the trenches using Oracle apps and database. And I'll, I'll tell you, it's 30 in a row I had the opportunity to, to speak with them. And, you know, two years ago, it was sort of like, okay, what's cloud? Like, why do we want to use it? You know, to really the question now is how? Like, I know we're going to move to cloud, or at least I know we're going to have a thoughtful journey to cloud. Not everything might move overnight, but there might be some things that move. Some things might remain on-prem. So there's going to be a thoughtful path or journey for us. Not all journeys to cloud are the same. They are all different. Um, but again, it's sort of turning to more of like, how do we get there? So it's not just sort of Gen 1 self-service, you know, cloud or, you know, lift and shift and you're on your own. It's how do I architect it? How do I migrate it? How do I manage it? If I'm moving data to cloud, you know, how do I take advantage of all these new technologies that are cloud-based that'll let me do something different, right? I think phase one or cloud 1.0 was, hey, let me move storage on my prem and put it up in your cloud. And you know, that's okay, but it's not just about moving things. It's about now that I move the data, what can I do with it? And so I think that idea of what's possible is are, are, are the, um, the, the discussions that we're engaging with our customers today, which is much mm -hmm. different than sort of talking about scalability, elasticity, or, you know, hey, you can save, you know, cost on getting out of the data center to much more of like you can reduce costs. And we'll get back to the security. I think it's a great question. You can reduce risk actually moving to cloud, but then ultimately it enables you to innovate and do things you fundamentally couldn't do before. Steve, that's the, that's the fun part of it, right? All the issues that you mentioned of scalability, elasticity, security, cost savings are vital. But it seems today in the digital world for companies to keep pace with the expectations and requirements of customers, whether that's a consumer facing business or B2B, they've got to move faster, create new products and services faster than ever before. 
and cloud is one of the ways they're able to do that, right? Yeah, and whether it's existing customers, we have a you know Hertz, and you know they'll talk about how the, the provision of database it would take them eight week, uh, two weeks. They can do it in eight minutes now, and so they talked about how we take those resources and time, and we focus that on being more competitive. We have a small Dallas-based uh, company called QMP. They're in the lab management business. And they were dealing with a hard uh, issue of getting lab results in a more timely fashion. You know, if you went, had your blood drawn or had lab results taken, usually take about two weeks. And they use our autonomous database and were able to do it, take that time down to 30 minutes. So imagine that, that sort of faster time to diagnosis, which means faster time to you know, prescribing, you know, how to deal with it to faster time to recovery. And this stuff has real impact, not only on the healthcare industry, but on the people they serve. And so, you know, we're seeing some really interesting fundamental breakthroughs for companies of all sizes, leveraging this new technology. And, you know, we're happy to be at the forefront of taking this technology, packaging up in ways that our customers can get that benefit and drive real business outcomes and people outcomes to your point. Yeah, and Steve, you, you brought up the autonomous database and, you know, it's a, a, a phenomenon right now in the market that every company needs to be able to um, get that rock solid security. But as you were describing, you know, how do I do what I've been doing more efficiently, more effectively, and how do I create new types of services to keep up both with what's happening from the customer side, but also competitors and what's going on there. So what is it about the autonomous database? Because I think Oracle stands completely alone, right? No other database company is able to offer something like this. What is it about that product that is capturing people's fancy right now? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, we have thousands of people, you know, using it, trying it right now. And I mean, they are seeing some incredible benefits. Um, you know, we just announced TaylorMade who said, it increased the reporting performance by 40x from what was on-prem. And it's interesting, we used to think, oh, if you go to cloud, you're gonna actually, you know, your performance might degrade versus what I could have on-prem. And what you're finding is that's actually not the case at all. And, you know, autonomous is an interesting thing for us. It's, you know, there's a clear lead there because one, it's, you know, it's a little bit of a secret sauce. This is some, this is, you know, thousands of engineering years worth of database optimization from 9i memory management to the latest um, and greatest in 18C. And then you couple that with the machine learning algorithm that allows you to take advantage of, um, you know, training data real time. And then this is all built upon our, our infrastructure, our next gen infrastructure, which was really purpose built to handle these types of workloads. So all these things together are driving real benefit and the benefits could be Again, it's self-driving. So, you know, using automation, it automates a lot of the manual tasks from tuning to provisioning to patching to different things like that. So we believe you save about 80% of the time you would have spent on setting up and provisioning a database. I had a marketing intern set up a, a database in two minutes, a data warehouse in two minutes. So, I mean, so that's a game changer. And then what we're finding is people are taking the time that would have been spent on that and saying, let me take my DBAs and align them closer to the lines of business. How do we think about uh, getting better analytics within our HR department, or our marketing department, our sales department? How do we save this time and focus more on app development than on sort of tuning and performance management? So we're seeing it fundamentally change things in that way. Not only that it was, it's faster, but it gives you faster time to insights. And again, it allows you to flip the status quo of, you know, 80% of spend today is going to maintenance and maybe only 20% to innovation. And to your point, the market's moving too fast. You can't afford that. And so if you have a solution that comes in and turns that on its head, so 80% of my time now is going to innovation, um, you know, that, that's a game changer for a lot of companies. And that's why we're seeing um, some real inter interest in it today. Steve, I want to come back in, in just a second to the point you raised there about the autonomous database running only on Oracle's, you know, next gen or gen two infrastructure. But the, the customer you mentioned there, TaylorMade, a few months ago, I had written a piece about that and I thought it was fascinating. The, the, the top IT executive at TaylorMade had said 
the the forty x performance difference. And I remember in the, the the video that he had shot, he said, "I just want to emphasize that I'm not talking forty percent increase, forty yeah. times more effective." <laughs> And see if I remember, I wrote, I said, heck, if somebody, if you could achieve 5% of what they did, it's still doubling the performance. So oh. it was, it was hard to, to grasp that, that, uh, the, the magnitude of that performance increase. It really is interesting. You know, like, and when I'm putting together the material, sometimes I'll have to double take to, I'm like, wait a minute, this 40%. Wow. That's a great story. 40% increase in the performance. And they're like, dude, no, it's 40 X. <laughs> and I'm like, wow. You know, and, you see that. I mean, you see people, uh, um, you know, examples of moving into Oracle Cloud infrastructure and what we're doing there. And OceanX, who had actually been running on Amazon, moved to OCI and saw a 10x improvement in performance. Um, you know, FireEye, a company who, you know, processes millions of emails a day to protect them from cyber threats. And they're seeing, you know, a modest two times performance, which is sort of insane to say that, while also saving 50% in cost. And so all of these things sort of go together. And then the other really interesting thing about autonomous, so you sort of like you have this performance increase while you're reducing cost. And the third really big piece of this, Bob, is they can also reduce risk. So like I'd say one of the killer apps of autonomous is this ability to self-patch. And, you know, when you can do that, um, you know, again, that saves you from, you know, a lot of growing cyber threats that are happening out there in the market today. And Steve, just with that point that you made there about the, the security and reducing risk, <clears throat> I know Oracle loves all of its customers, but there have been instances where some Oracle customers haven't been maybe as rigorous as they could be in doing the patching, right? For, you know, they're busy with other stuff, but you've sort of taken that off, off of their plate now, right? Well, we're just trying to simplify things. I think for us, we have a very, um, I'd, say, I'd say, very you know, big view or broad view. I mean, security is sort of in our DNA, right? I mean, you can say Oracle is a security company, always has been from the start. And when we look at things, we look at it from the user perspective. Our, our identities are the new perimeter. It's no longer the four walls of the enterprise. How do you think about protecting application access? How do you think about encrypting the data and then how do you have an infrastructure that can, you know, stop DDoS attacks from occurring? And so there's so many different areas to look at from a management user data management side, you know, self-patching is a big one. It's interesting. In 85% of the cases where a breach occurred, there was actually a patch already available for that breach up to a year before it happened. And so it just gets complex. People have to bring down their systems. You have to sort of test everything. It's time consuming. And so again, having a system that can update itself prevents one of the big occurrences of breach. Um, it's also another thing, other things we sort of automate. Another stat that says in 17, in the average enterprise gets 17,000 alerts a week. So imagine all those sort of signals coming in, the signals from the noise, only 19% of those alerts are reliable and only 4% are ever investigated. Right. So now you have a system that can sort of automatically identify anomalous behavior and take proactive measures to protect. And then finally, just another interesting stat is in the U.S. alone, by 2021, there are going to be 3.5 million open cybersecurity jobs. You know, and it's like, you know, you just can't find talent. And even if you could find enough people to throw out the problem, humans, no matter how many, uh, you know, can't sort of deal with these attacks where, Often these bad actors are using these same emerging technologies to wage a highly sophisticated war against enterprises or companies of all sizes. And so something like autonomous can use automation to help protect your systems as well as drive, you know, you know, improvement in query performance. So you sort of get the gambit of it, um, um, you know, using autonomous. It's really interesting. So Steve, the, uh, that, that product, the Autonomous Database, and then also, um, well, it's one of two that Larry has publicly on earnings statements talked about, you know, really gonna determine the future of the company. That, and originally he was talking about the cloud ERP system, and more recently he's opened that up to our Oracle SaaS applications. Yeah. So if we put the SaaS apps over here for a second, your company has taken uh, something of a unique approach here in the cloud where he said, we've got this, new database product autonomous, but 
to ensure it runs at the optimal performance, it's got to run on Oracle infrastructure. So in a way, it seems like you're blurring the lines a little bit between infrastructure and platform. Is that just sort of a natural evolution of how this market's moving forward and how Oracle finds it can deliver highest value uh, to customers? I think that's a brilliant point. I think it is. It's almost the same thing. Like if you pull apps back in a little bit, it's, you know, where do apps stop and platform begins? <clears throat> you know, at the end of the day, I move an app to cloud. Well, you know, where does integration come in to either connect that to multi-cloud or <clears throat> connect that application back to what I have on-prem or as I move things to cloud. And again, I might have multi-cloud, heterogeneous, hybrid. You know, how do I protect those things with maybe secure ID access management <clears throat> that spans that? To, how do I think about doing analytics across, you know, multiple applications? So. I think what we're finding is one of the reasons we sort of have a strategy of having, you know, traditional SaaS applications as well as traditional platform applications like database integration, analytics, security, as well as a foundational infrastructure to run on. Because I do think when you think about a customer solution, the lines aren't drawn that firmly. You know, there is a little bit of a blurring. It's not like, oh, shoot, you just moved that app to cloud. You probably got to go somebody else, call somebody else to work on that integration. Oh man, you want to do analytics across all these different heterogeneous apps? Hey, you know, you know, ain't my problem. I mean, you can't operate like that. And then a lot of the value in things like IoT and blockchain and machine learning, you have to have the foundational infrastructure that allows you to collect that, process it, mine it, you know, do the training data for it. And um, so we see all these things definitely sort of playing together. And it's one of the reasons why our strategy is to be able to offer that. And you know, works in non-Oracle non workloads as well, non-Oracle apps, we can extend, enrich, and connect those. You know, Oracle's pretty open in terms of where you can run Oracle database on. We're just saying, look, if you want to get the benefits of something like autonomous, you know, you're going to have to use our whole solution. And, you know, and I think that's just how we've architected and how we can offer something that others just can't today. Steve, and a minute ago, when you talked about that blurring of the lines across, right, you know, industry start and it's industry jargon, SaaS, PaaS, infrastructure, right? And I think as the business use cases start to evolve and the conversation shifts over more to how businesses are using them, these lines do get blurred like that because otherwise you're sort of sending your customers back 15 or 20 years ago to the on-prem world where you go to one of each of 500 vendors, buy a couple things from each, and then you, the customer responsible for making all that stuff work together that was never intended yeah. to. You're like, peace out, drop the mic <laughs> on your own. You guys figure it out. Like, call me when you need more. It doesn't work like that anymore. That's absolutely right. And again, I think you have to work backwards from the customer. Like, we're talking about autonomous database or autonomous data warehouse, but for instance, there's a lot of interest in line of business and line of business is a great use case for it. But that discussion is one around, hey, rich analytics with my HR data or I'm marketing, I'm trying to better understand my customers or I'm trying to more effectively measure my demand gen spend or other things. And those are the conversations you're having. Now, in that solution shopping cart, you might have a data warehouse, integration, analytics, cloud, what have you. But rather than sort of an inside out view of let me show you my product lineup, you really are going to start, I think, particularly as line of business gets more important in this decision making, it's going to be more about a business outcome, a result I'm trying to achieve or, or specific project that we can accomplish together. And then as you get, you know, closer to deployment, you'll get more prescriptive on the technology and things. But I think we're also changing our engagement model by having a different sort of discussion with our customers than we would have in the past. Steve, so that brings up this notion that th there's only a, a, a small number of the big tech companies that are playing in all three of the traditional layers of the cloud, right? Apps and platform and infrastructure. Yeah. From the customer's point of view, what advantage do they get that Oracle plays in all three of those areas? Yeah, I think that's, I think it's exactly what you said. If you're sitting down and you're having a discussion on their journey to cloud or their path to cloud. I think we can come in with choice of entry point. Like that entry point could be an ERP or wow, I have a legacy ERP system with thousands of custom bespoke, you know, uh, tweaks. But I don't want to move that anytime soon. But you know, I do want to modernize my HR system. So we can have a discussion with that, which says, okay, deploy net new HR. 
either remain on-prem and we can deploy that in a hybrid model, or maybe we want to take that legacy ERP system and we can lift and shift that to bare metal infrastructure just so you start getting the cost savings of, uh, you know, maintaining your own, you know, internal data center. Or that first step to cloud could be app dev, or maybe it could be analytics or data management, or maybe it's security, or maybe it's infrastructure level. And I just want to keep my store someplace else, or I want a DR solution. And so for us, no matter what that entry point is, the great thing is we can go in, we have a solution for them. And then no matter what that next step of the journey is, if the first step was an app, then that's followed by platform, the role infrastructure seamlessly plays in the platform, we can do that for them. And we understand that, you know, cloud wars or the game of clouds or everything that's going on, you know, there's going to be multiple vendors out there in the market. And so we need to have a strong offering. We come from a heterogeneous on-prem world. So we understand that these things need to be able to plug into each other and play well. We think that's important for us as well. So it's about, you know, having an open platform and giving our customers a uh, choice at the end of the day and, and really honestly working through a very thoughtful journey with them. You know, it's not about, hey, you want yourself cloud, we got you cloud, sort of a forced migration overnight. You know, we can sort of, you know, you know, take, take the steps with them. Steve, that ties in with what you've said a couple times here about everybody, every customer's journey is different and they've got to move about it in, in that company's own way. So um, uh, hybrid is a point you've brought up a couple times. And I think, oh man, it had to be three years ago that, you know, Larry Ellison was first using the term, the decade of coexistence. Yeah. And I think that from that point, Oracle was stepping out and saying a little bit like, we are going to help tie these worlds together in the ways that the customers choose. So is it an advantage that Oracle has played in both the on-premises world and now the cloud world, so as far as customers are concerned? I think so. I mean, I think it gives us a degree of understanding and empathy, right? It's the basis of understanding of people and their needs. We've gone, you know, not only have we gone through these transformations with them before, right? mainframe to client server to riser internet to mobile to cloud and it'd be really interesting at some point to have a discussion on the change management that has to occur within the companies it's not just about the technology it'd be great to sort of talk about cloud wars and sort of the non-technical aspects of moving which i just we talk about more and more with our customers like where do you upskill where are the decisions being made how do you work together but to go back to your point this it is important because people aren't just sort of saying, all right, I'm shutting down, you know, there's that, you imagine that one giant lever on the, the wall, they just sort of push down and they're done with on-prem. Like it doesn't happen like that. Again, some companies might do that. Other companies sort of have a matrix, right? It's like, what can we move when, you know, what type of things can move to cloud? By the way, maybe based on data sovereignty or compliance or governance or, just their own internal requirements, there might be some things that just can't move anytime soon or maybe never will. And because that, you can't just walk in and have sort of a, you know, a, a single option for them where it's just like, you know, you can move or you can move, which is like, okay, we'll help you, you know, based on application, type of data, region, um, your own sort of hierarchy of needs and priorities. We really need to do this customer facing stuff to keep competitive, this backend stuff, we're probably okay for a little while, or no, we need to flip the script and change this backend in order to be, you know, you know, be ready to handle scale and volume. So whatever those discussions are, we can have it with them, which is great. And we have a solution that again, not only spans all layers of the cloud, so whatever, whatever they wanna do in the cloud, we can help, but also one that bridges them back to what they have on-prem and what they might continue to buy on-prem you know, which so many customers are still doing. Yeah, yeah. So Steve, last couple of things I wanted to ask you about is one uh, was, you know, again, not too many years ago, but there was a lot of talk about, oh, cloud is gonna kill the channel. You know, the partner ecosystem in the tech industry is gonna be eliminated by the cloud. Clearly that's not happening. So how is Oracle engaging with its partner ecosystem in the cloud now in ways that are specifically driving new value over for customers. Yeah, it's interesting. I, mean, I think the opportunity for partners is, is massive. And I'm, I'm like a, 
guy who came from the networking world and I was doing like dollar days at Ingram Micro selling NIC cards back in the day. Like I've been around this channel where, but I'll tell you, like I said earlier, it is about the how, you know, customers want help with the how, with the migration. How do I integrate these new technologies? Um, you know, what does blockchain mean and how do I build that in or leverage it? What's the role of IoT if I'm a manufacturer? So there's just so many, I think, big things that customers are dealing with that, to be honest, partners in a great position to drive, whether it's aggregating different components from Oracle to provide a, a, a more holistic solution or whether it's other pieces as well. You know, partners also understand industries really well. They understand regions really well. You know, there's an opportunity not only to sell, but to help build, to help service. And so I think um, more than ever, it's an incredible opportunity for partners to reinvent themselves, not just traditionally push boxes or products, but really go in and drive value added services when they're honestly needed the most. Um, you know, we want to, you know, we look to cloud to simplify the complexity we had on prem, but cloud can get a little complex. And so, you know, there's a great role for partners to play in that. And we are doing everything we can to enable them on the Oracle story, uh, provide incentives and partner closely with them um, to help customers on their journeys. Steve, funny line there you had about, uh, you know, the selling Nick cards at dollar days back in <laughs> But it seems like a long time ago, but the pace yeah. of things are changing. It's so crazy now. And so, Steve, the last thing I wanted to check in with you about is what's your view and Oracle's view of the competitive landscape now and where Oracle stands in that? Yeah, I think it's, you know, I think we have where, you know, I respect all of our competitors greatly. I think, you know, when we sort of people get asked, like, you know, who's your one competitor? Sometimes somebody might be coming from an IS bias and uh, they have like Amazon in the head or it could be a question that's SaaS related and it's, you know, and it's Salesforce and a work day and others, um, you know, so for us, you know, we got to focus on what we're doing. I think we run into different people. If we're selling on analytics, you run into the tableaus of the world. There's a big data component. You have MuleSoft and Boomi on integration. So it sort of depends on when you bring all these pieces together, the, the vendor landscape we compete against, I think becomes, you know, broader. And again, I think they become more specialized where we try to bring more of a full solution to the table. Um, um, yeah, so it's sort of interesting from that perspective, but I think we're doing well. I mean, to be honest, being on something like this with you and, and talking about sort of the broad scope of our offering, I think says a lot. I think if you looked at four or five years ago, I think people were wondering what Oracle's role in the cloud was. I mean, I think now, if you look at it, you know, there's leadership in the application space. I think the, the, um, the, the technical innovation that we're driving in the platform space and sort of quarter our DNA being, you know, analytics and security, and particularly database and data management, and then really having purpose built this next gen cloud infrastructure that supports cloud native workloads, can support machine learning workloads, high performance computing workloads, as well as your traditional workloads is, um, that strategy is paying off, um, you know, I think in the market with our customers. Um, and I think, again, I think having the opportunity to speak with you, I think uh, sort of says a lot as well. Well, Steve, thanks. And, and along those lines, I guess the last thing, I don't know if it's a, you know, a secret uh, project or code word slipped out, but you mentioned Game of Clouds. Is that something <laughs> we should be watching for from Oracle? No, you know, it was just funny. I was thinking about cloud words. I, I was like, uh, I was actually talking to my daughter yesterday and I'm like, oh, you know, I'm going to go on. I'm going to see Bob. I haven't seen him in a while. It's called Game of, game, you know, Cloud War. Sounds pretty cool. I'm like, hey, maybe I could pitch him on a game, game of Clouds or something. <laughs> He's like, well, who would you be? And I'm like, well, you know, maybe Don Snow, but let's see how the last episode sort of plays out. I don't want to do any spoiler alerts out there to your audience, but uh, there's one more, there's one more show left, and then maybe I could come back and say who I would be. All right, all right. Well, Steve, it's a great way to tie things into you know the fast-moving consumer world there for Oracle. And Steve, <laughs> before we go, is there anything else you wanted to mention? No, I mean, I think we covered it. I'm honestly thankful to have the time. It'd be great to stay in contact. It was great seeing you. Love, you know, to spend some time and get your view and, and 
go from there. I'm opportunity, you know, appreciate the opportunity and the platform to tell the story. Well, Steve, thanks. That, it's been great. Really interesting perspectives on Oracle and, and glad to see it looks like you're having a lot of fun as the company's really pushing out into some new areas. Thank you so much, Bob. You're welcome. And thanks, everybody, for joining us here at Cloud Wars Live. We've got a good look at Oracle's cloud strategy. So I hope we'll see you next time.